Welcome back to Ant's Boxing Channel. As I told y'all to stay tuned, because what we doing right now, we about to do some film study on Javon Ennis versus Kevin Kuchadzian. I'm sorry if I messed up his name. That's not on purpose. I'm not trolling. I really just don't know how to pronounce that, but I tried my best. After this, we're going to watch um, Romain Villa versus um, Rashidi Speedy Ellis. Yo salgo a la calle buscando mi gente cuando de repente todos los delincuentes que queden mi vida buena mala suerte que son mi familia no importa la sangre. Jesús agua en vino. We about to do some film study because they fight in July July 8th next Saturday and y'all not gonna wanna miss that because that fight is about to be crazy and it's about to be very revealing of Jerron Anderson where he stands. So let's get into it. But before we even start this breakdown, I wanna say this. Shout out to UOD Boxing for providing us these highlights because I couldn't really find any like Showtime highlights and a lot of the highlights I found had like music and stuff like that in them. So shout out to him for providing us these highlights. I'm going to leave him a like, show some love and support. And y'all better do the same if y'all watching these videos. All right, now, let's get into the breakdown. All right, let me see. So right here. I don't, I don't understand what them centimeters is in inches, so, but you can see that um, Cameron has the shorter arms for sure. Where's the height at? Uh, oh, they're they nearly the same height. He's, he's a .01 meter. I don't know how much that is in inches, but once again, they're nearly the same height, but he got the shorter arms, so keep that in mind because styles make fights. Let's see. Let's take a look. Take a look. Good little jab to the body. You know, Jerron on this. Mm -hmm. Nice little jab to the body. Good little hook to the body. Mm -hmm. Good little jab. Some of those. Guys. Oh, he got caught right there, though. He got, he got caught by a nice little counter right there. Let me see how that happened. Because these dudes be fast. You got to catch their movement. Because they be moving fast. Boy, let's slow that down. I want to see where his guard was at. That's what I'm trying to see right now. That's what we're looking for. Where was his guard at? He landed a good jab. Comes in with a jab, and he came in with a jab, and Cameron made him pay. Did you see that? That was, like, that was a clean shot, too, on the temple. But Cameron, if you look at him, you see right here, Cameron is 21-1-0 with 11 KO, so he don't got knockout power like that. But if that was a knockout puncher, bro, he might have been hurt right there, honestly. But check that out one more time. I want y'all to see this. He got countered. Boom. Because his guard. Did y'all see where his guard was at? Look at his guard. He, he, he threw the punch because he tried to throw a combination. He came in with a jab. I think he was from the southpaw position, I think. He came in with a jab, and then he was focused on throwing that other punch. So to try to sit on it, his guard came down here instead of it coming back. And then he got caught. Well, even if it was here, he got caught in the temple. But you're going to see. Pay attention. Pay attention. I'm going to slow it down even more so y'all can see this because we're breaking this down. Pay attention to the details. I want y'all to pay attention to this so we can learn boxing. Look, boom, right? Then watch how he comes right here. What you're going to see, the hand comes, he counters, look at his hand down there, did y'all see his hand? Did y'all see where his hand was at? It was way down there. You see, you want to pay attention to that. So see, even right here, it looks like um, Cameron was just letting him do his thing so he can land that one punch. Nevertheless, Jermaine Dennis is winning the round, you know what I mean? He's the busier one. One punch isn't going to win you around. you know what I mean? Especially when you got Jerron coming through with the nice jabs, you know, he's the one igniting. He's boom, boom. Jerron is, he's very athletic, very athletic, but one thing I see about Jerron Dennis is that um, he got that Teofimo syndrome, where he, the, he, he relies on his athleticism, you see him throw a jab, but it'll be one jab, it's like a power jab, and he's just throwing it, and that's it, it's not like a utility jab, where he's like, he's not pouring, he's not throwing it to figure anything out, he's just throwing that jab, whether he throws it downstairs to the body, or throws it upstairs, um, and then he'll try to come in with like a, a, a power punch, um, not really setting much up, he's not really setting up his punches. I'm trying to see what happened. Oh, that was a nice little punch right there by, by Jerron. I'm, I'm, I want to catch that. Slow that down. Because I, I ain't even really got to catch that too good. I want to see what he did there. I want to see what Jerron did there. We studying, film studying. Boom. Mm -hmm. That was a weird, that was a weird angle. That was a very, very weird angle. You don't see that people punching like that much. Very good angle from Javon Ennis right there. Very impressive. It's like... It wasn't even the angle. It was like... Uh, uh, it wasn't even the angle. It was like he punched in between the guy's movement. So it made the angle look weird. But um, 
Anyways, good jab right there. See, Javon Anderson has a power jab, so when he lands that jab, it's, it's, like, it's not just like a little flick, you know what I mean? This is a good jab, strong jab. Right, let's pick up, pick up the speed, pick up the speed, where we at? Ooh, good jab, look at that. Mm -hmm. Caught him with the end of that right here. And this is, one thing about Ennis I've seen a couple times already, um, I may be wrong, but I'm just seeing it right now. I don't know if he's going to continue doing this throughout the fight. He'll punch a little bit out of range. The dude is out of range, and he's trying to, like, jab, but the dude is out of range. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or not, but I just noticed that. One thing... Another thing to notice here about Ennis is he's not cutting off the ring, doing a very poor job of cutting off the ring. The dude is moving around, and Ennis is just following him around the ring. He's not cutting it off. That's why he's missing a lot of his punches. Good defense, Ennis. I see good defense, responsible defense. Ooh. He blocked that, but that would have been good. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, there we go. Kajazian. Okay, ooh, Javon landed a nice left hand right there. Yeah, this fight. The reason y'all don't really see me giving too much insight is because it's kind of like a lot of the same stuff that I've already said going on. Um, but one thing that's happening is it's looking like um, um, and this is doing a better job at um, punching more in distance. Like how I said at the beginning or earlier, I saw him throwing a couple punches and he looked like he was out of range. Um, I don't know if that's a habit or not. Still don't know, but right now he's doing a better job of it. This fight right here kind of resembles to me like um, Teofimo versus Sandor Martin. Like the dude, is, his movement, like, and this don't look as good as he normally looks. And it's all because of this guy's movement. He's unrolling um, with a lot of the punches. And um, even when he's throwing like hooks to the body, you see he's like moving with it. Um, and sometimes he's like, he, he doesn't do it a whole lot, but sometimes he's like in and out a little bit and stepping back, making Ennis fall short of his punches. Um, you know, it's not so much that he's really doing much offensively good to get on Ennis. He caught him with, with, with caught him with a couple good little shots here and there. But um for the most part it's more the movement and Ennis's lack of cutting off the ring. He's allowing him to move like that because he's not cutting off the ring. Um because he's just eager to land that punch and, and hurt him and get him out of there. Good body shot by Ennis. Go hook right there. I wanna see what Ennis was doing when he got caught because Kajazian caught him with a nice little left hook right there. And I want to see what exactly caused that. Was he lacking? Was he lacking? We're going to find out right now. Let's see. It's a good body shot. That was a nice body shot. Boom, boom. The guard. The guard. Did you see how low that guard was? The guard. And this has a, and this has a bad habit of sometimes lowering his guard. And like I said, this dude ain't a power puncher. Just like in round one. That was what, round seven? Just like in round one. Um, he threw a punch to try to let off a combination, and he dropped his guard to try to land that second punch. And right now, um, he wasn't even throwing a punch. He was just, I think he got confused. He misread the movement, um, the, probably the dude's body movement is what I'm guessing. Let's see. Did I go back far enough? Oh, no, yeah. It's coming now. Boom. Yeah, see, it's like, it's like he got a little lazy. He got like a little lazy and misread the dude's movement. See, the, he didn't expect the dude to come with a combination because he blocked the first punch. He had his hand, he had, you know what I mean? He answered the phone with the first one, block, blocked the punch, but the other hand was down here. It was like a long, pretty shell. Like, but, um, you know, the dude ended up just throwing that combination and caught him with that. I didn't know that happens. That's nothing too crazy. But um, I'm just saying I saw it in the first round. I saw it in the second round. Overall, it's not too big. It's an issue no matter what because you want to fight. It only takes one punch to put your lights out. You know what I mean? But I'm saying it's not like it's something that... I'm not too worried about Ennis' guard, but it's something that he wants to be paying attention to against a, a, a power puncher. Yeah, that could be worrisome, especially if the power puncher can move around and make Ennis miss and pay and counter punch him. Really, but this dude isn't really a good. He's not a counter puncher. He's just moving around to avoid Ennis, um, and he don't really want to engage in battle too much, picking his spots. But he's not counter punching. He's kind of just swinging when he swings, and a couple times he did that. He's um he caught him with clean shots. Of course, nevertheless, Ennis is winning the fight, though. 
Oh, 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 what's going on here? Oh, 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 hold on. We got to we gotta slow that down. <laughs> Yo, Kajazian making Ennis look subpar right here. Let's see. And I'm not hating on Ennis. I'm just saying I'm analyzing Ennis because he's about to fight. That's the reason. I'm not. I'm analyzing on what he's doing good, what he's doing bad. You know what I mean? But let's see. Good uppercut by Ennis right there. Good hook. Both of them landed that hook. Boom. See, look, the movement. He got to come back, set that trap. Bop. Caught him with a straight right. Ooh, caught him with another punch. Bannis actually did a good job of rolling with the punches and then caught him with a nice uppercut right there. Um, let's see, though, because we analyze him, right? Boom. See, and it's stalking him, stalking him, trying to come forward, and then he got caught just um, flat-footed right there. But he was rolling with the punches, though. He used good movement. It, it, it alleviated some of it because that could have been worse, but he did use good movement, upper body movement, to um, roll with some of them punches and good guard, but he got caught with two good punches. Right there. He got caught chasing. Mm -hmm. A body shot. Mm -hmm. A little jab right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. Nice. Oh! Good hook upstairs by Ennis. There you go. Yeah, I think I've seen enough for this fight. It's kind of... Well, well, you know, rounds one through twelve, we kind of, it was kind of the same fight throughout the whole time. Sometimes it's hard to find highlights, man. These people. But once again, shout out to Arena Tay Room. I left a like, and I suggest y'all do the same. Show love, show love to these content creators. All right, let's do this. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Once again, this is a guy who one point seven eight. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna compare it all in a breakdown, but just take a look at this. Um, 25. See, do you remember Kuz, um, Kuz Chian, the guy he fought? He had, he had 11 knockouts, only 21 fights. This dude got 24 knockouts, 25 fights. So you know he got power. That's one thing we know. You see the height, the age, all that stuff. Couple young bulls. Couple young bulls. Ah, let's see. You can see Rashidi is fast. I'm going to mute this. You can see, yeah, you can see Rashidi is fast. Let's see him, um, but we're looking at Villa right now. What is Villa doing? Villa likes to, he, mm hmm kind of just standing there. Kind of just standing there. He a big boy, though. You could tell he, 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 he a big boy. He tall. He got some decent range. He utilizes the high guard. He likes to use the high guard a lot. Mm-hmm. See, Rashidi Ellis was fighting a good fight. I remember when I seen this, I had him winning the fight um, early on. This round two, a little like he lost round one, just off of activity. And, okay. See, he sits on his punches. Villa's the type he's going to stalk you down, corner you, cut off the ring, try, try to... um. He's going to try to corner you, wait till he has you in the corner or on the ropes. That's his game plan. That's what he's doing this fight. He's waiting till he has Rashidi Ellis on the ropes, and then that's where he tees off. But see, Villa isn't really cutting off the ring either, though. Villa's kind of just walking him down. He's just trying to walk him straight down. We're in round three now. You can tell he punches with bad intent, though. He got some. He got. You could tell he got some power behind him swings. Let's see. See, Villa doesn't really use a lot of upper body movement. Ellis was comfortable though, yeah. See, he was dancing and stuff like that. Oh, good body shot. Oh.
He gets caught by them jabs. It's the speed, though. Rashidi Ellis got speed, so... That punch is going right through his guard. Good uppercut. Very good uppercut. He don't cut off the ring at all. He's just, he's letting Rashidi Ellis just move as he pleases. <laughs> Rashidi's nice though, man. Rashidi Ellis is nice. Good jab, good movement. Good utilize. He utilizes his lateral movement good. But he lets this dude catch him on the ropes. And the reason I don't like that is because it's not like this dude is really cutting off the ring to catch him anywhere. Rashidi Ellis is just falling back onto the ropes and letting them um, throw punches. But it's not, nothing is really landing too effective for, for Villa. Right there, that was a good, that looked like a good hook or uppercut that landed good. Oh, good body shot by Villa. See, Villa's a tough dude. He's a pretty tough dude. But Rashidi Ellis also don't got like no crazy knockout power either. He got 24 fights, 15 knockouts. That's pretty good, but it's not like he got he got like respectable power. It looks to me, pretty good power. Sevilla looks like. Dang, it's crazy. Oh, Rashidi got a little lazy right there. He got a little lazy and Villa caught. Look right there. Pop. Woo. He kept his guard down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good uppercut by Villa. Oh, good left hook by Villa. Right hook right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, left hook. See, Villa, the thing about Villa is that he's just, oh, that was a big right hand. And this is where the fight starts changing. See, Ellis had it. Honestly, Ellis probably might have been up, like, through the 10th, Ellis, through the 9th, Ellis might have been up, like, honestly, probably, like, 6-3, 7-2, honestly. Just looking at these highlights. Damn, the right hook. Ooh, it's just, that was a big shot. Right on a jaw, too. Right in the face. Dang, bro. Yeah. That was a big punch. That was a clean punch. Clean punch. That's crazy. The power. Wow. Wow. See, Villa got power. He don't got the crazy. He don't got the craziest speed, but he got good power, and he's relentless. He's just gonna come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. Even if he's not punching, it's the um. The mental pressure of having this dude just come forward, come forward, come forward. And you land in punches and combinations and he's just not going nowhere. Damn. So he, let me see. So I know that Villa won, right? So I would say like through the nine rounds, I had it like six, three, seven, two for um what's his name? Rashidi Ellis. Villa took the tenth. So that's like six, four, seven, three. He took the eleventh. That's like six, five, seven, four. Then you have Villa took the twelfth. So that's like either six, six or seven, five. But then with two knockdowns, yeah, he won that fight. Uh, he did. Okay, I was I was thinking like, was it a robbery? But now nah, he won with them two with them with them two knockdowns and stuff like that. Um, that was a good fight though. But we seen what Jerron Ennis does, right? We seen what Villa does. 
Y'all watched the film study with me. Y'all saw what I said about both fighters, right? Stay tuned for tomorrow because I'm going to put all of this into a breakdown. And I'm going to give you my prediction on who I think wins this fight and how. All right? That's it for Ann's Boxing Channel. I'm out. Coño, sube eso hasta arriba. Vamos, dale duro. Yo salgo a la calle buscando mi gente cuando de repente todos los delincuentes que queden en mi vida. Buena mala suerte que son mi familia. No importa la sangre. Jesús y su agua en vino.